Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer at St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine. And welcome to proper 16. Uh, today, our saint is rather a well-known one, and that's Augustine of Hippo. Definitely not Augustine, by the way, it's Augustine. He was born in 354 in Northern Africa, near um, the city of uh, Carthage, which was a major city at the time. He um, was one of our, uh, one of the greatest theologians of Western Christianity. In those days, um, Christianity was divided into two parts. One was the Eastern, which was Greek speaking, and the other Western, which was Latin speaking. And um, probably you can guess that the center for the Western um, Christianity was Rome and the in the Eastern Constantinople and um, the Middle East in general. Augustine um, never learned Greek and so um, he was not overly well uh, influenced by Greek thought. And the two sides of the church looked at the world differently um, because of that language difference. And uh, not only language difference, but just the way they looked at the world and um, even um, at God. Um, uh, Augustine's mother was uh, famous and became a saint, in fact, for praying for her uh, wayward son and eventually um, becoming a major influence on his conversion to Christianity because he was a wayward son. He was quite a scamp, as, the, um, as my grandmother would say, in his younger days. You can read about his life and his, con um, his conversion in a book called The Confessions of St. Augustine. It's, um, it's a good book, um, quite readable. He also is um, probably better known for a book called The City of God, which um, was um, prompted by the Visigoths um, sacking of Rome and um, some incidents um, that happened during that time that um, prompted him to, to write the book in defense of well, really defense of the nuns that, that were attacked as part of the siege. Anyway, today we honor Augustine. He's a theologian that some of us love to hate because he came up with some, he, the doctrine of original sin originated with him. And some of us um, to this day uh, don't particularly like the trouble that that doctrine has caused through the centuries. However, it seemed like a good idea at the time. So with that, let us begin. We will be um, starting on page 78 as usual and moving quickly to page 80. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Page 80. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Turning to page 82, let us say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the, for the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God and we are the people of this pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Psalms. 
This morning, we will read Psalm 1, 2, and 3, beginning on page 585, whole verse responsively. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Okay, turning to Psalm 2. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the peoples mutter and empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up in revolt? And the princes plot together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. He whose throne is in heaven is laughing. The Lord has them in derision. Then he speaks to them in his wrath, and his rage fills them with terror. I myself have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Let me announce the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. This day have I gotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush them with an iron rod and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now you kings be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with, Lord with fear, and with trembling bow down before him. Lest he be angry and you perish, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are they all who take refuge in him. <laughs> it's Psalm, Psalm 3, excuse me. Lord, how many in adversaries I have had, I have, let's start again. Lord, how many adversaries I have, how many there are who rise up against me? How many there are who say of me, there is no help for him and his God. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield about me. You are my glory, the one who lifts up my head. I call aloud upon the Lord, and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and go to sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I do not fear the multitudes of people who set themselves against me all around. Rise up, O oh Lord. Set me free, O oh my God. Surely you will strike all my enemies across the face. You will break the teeth of the wicked. <clears throat> Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be upon your people. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Father and to the Son. And to the Son to the and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson. A reading from the first book of Kings. Now Adonijah, son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. He prepared for himself chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. His father had never at any time displeased him by asking, Why have you done thus and so? He was also a very handsome man, and he was born next after Absalom. He conferred with Joab, son of Zeruiah, and with the priest Abiathar, and they supported Adonijah. But the priest Zadok, and Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, and the prophet Nathan, 
and Shimei and Ray and David's own warriors did not side with Ad Adonijah. Adonijah sacrificed sheep, oxen, and fatted cattle by the stone Zoheleth, which is beside Enrogel, and he invited all his brothers, the king's sons, and all the royal officials of Judah, but he did not invite the prophet Nathan, or Beniah, or the warriors, or his brother Solomon. Then Nathan said to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, have you not heard that Adonijah, son of Haggith, has become king, and our Lord David does not know it? Now therefore come, let me give you advice, so that you may save your own life and the life of your son Solomon. Go in at once to King David and say to him, Did you not, my lord the king, swear to your servant, saying, Your son Solomon shall succeed me as king, and he shall sit on my throne? Why then is Adonijah king? Then, while you are still there speaking with the king, I will come in after you and confirm your words. So Bathsheba went to the king in his room. The king was very old. Abishag, the Shunammite, was attending the king. Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance to the king. And the king said, what do you wish? She said to him, my lord, you swore to your servant by the Lord your God, saying, your son Solomon shall succeed me as king, and he shall sit on my throne. But now suddenly Adonijah has become king, though you, my lord, the king, do not know it. He has sacrificed oxen, fatted cattle, and sheep in abundance, and has invited all the children of the king, the priest Abiathar, and Joab, the commander of the army. But your servant Solomon he has not invited. But you, my lord, the king, the eyes of all Israel are on you to tell them who shall sit on the throne of my lord, the king, after him. Otherwise, it will come to pass when my lord, the king, sleeps with his ancestors, that my son Solomon and I will be counted offenders. While she was still speaking with the king, the prophet Nathan came in. The king was told, here is the prophet Nathan. When he came in before the king, he did obeisance to the king with his face on the ground. Nathan said, my lord, the king, have you said Adonijah shall succeed me as king and he shall sit on my throne? For today he has gone down and has sacrificed oxen, fatted cattle and sheep in abundance and has invited all the king's children, Joab, the commander of the army and the priest Abiathar, who are now eating and drinking before him and saying, long live King Adonijah. But he did not invite me, your servant, and the priest Zadok, and Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, and your servant Solomon. Has this thing been brought about by my lord the king? And you have not let your servants know who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him? King David answered, Summon Bathsheba to me. So she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. The king swore, saying, as the Lord lives, who has saved my life from every adversity, as I swore to you by the Lord, the God of Israel, your son Solomon shall succeed me as king, and he shall sit on my throne in my place. So I will do this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the ground and did obeisance to the king and said, May my Lord King David live forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now turning to page 86, let us say together, Canticle number nine, the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was the beginning, is now, 
and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and began to defend himself. I consider myself fortunate that it is before you, King Agrippa. I am to make my defense today against all the accusations of the Jews, because you are especially familiar with all the customs and controversies of the Jews. Therefore, I beg of you to listen to me patiently. All the Jews know my way of life from my youth, a life spent from the beginning among my own people and in Jerusalem. They have known for a long time, if they are willing to testify, that I have belonged to the strictest set of our religion and lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand here on trial on account of my hope and the promise made by God to our ancestors, a promise that our 12 tribes hope to attain as they earnestly worship day and night. It is for this hope, your excellency, excellency that I am accused by Jews why is it thought incredible by any of you that God raises the dead? Indeed, I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things against the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is what I did in Jerusalem with authority received from the chief priests. I not only locked up many of the saints in prison, but I also cast my vote against them when they are being condemned to death by punishing them often in all the synagogues I tried to force them to blaspheme. And since I was so furiously enraged at them, I pursued them even to foreign cities. With this in mind, I was traveling to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. When at midday along the road, your excellency, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and my companions. When we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It hurts you to kick against the goads. I asked, who are you, Lord? The Lord answered, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you to serve and testify to the things in which you have seen me and to those in which I will appear to you. I will rescue you from your people and from the Gentiles to, to whom I am sending you to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may re receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. After that, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem, and throughout the countryside of Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do deeds consistent with repentance. For this reason, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. To this day, I have had help from God. And so I stand here testifying to both small and great, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would take place, that the Messiah must suffer and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us say together the song of the redeemed, Canticle 19, found on page 94. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The third lesson. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. But when you see the desolating sacrilege set up where it ought not to be, let the reader understand. Then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. The one on the housetop 
must not go down or enter the house to take anything away. The one in the field must not turn back to get a coat. Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing infants in those days. Pray that it may not be in winter. For in those days, there will be suffering such as not been seen from the beginning of the creation that God created until now. No, and never will be. And if the Lord had not cut short those days, no one would be saved. But for the sake of the elect whom he chose, he has cut short those days. And if anyone says to you at that time, look, here is the Messiah, or look, there he is, do not believe it. False messiahs and false prophets will appear and produce signs and omens to lead astray, if possible, the elder, the elect. But be alert, I have already told you everything. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens shall be shaken. Then they will see the son of man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now turning to page 96, let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. You are saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, the light of the minds, Sorry. Lord God, the light of the minds that know you, the life of the souls that love you, and the strength of the hearts that serve you, help us, following the example of your servant Augustine of Hippo, so to know you that we may truly love you, and so to love you that we may, tr may fully serve you, whom to serve is perfect freedom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and, by our, and guide our feet into the way of peace. 
that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, as we prepare ourselves to bring our prayers before God, I invite you to add your own. We pray this day for the church, for our Anglican communion, and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the diocese of Lo diocese of Yola within the Church of Nigeria, for the for our Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, for our diocese of Maine and Thomas, our bishop, for the Congregation of All Saints Chapel in on Oars Island, for students and educators preparing to begin a new school year and for our own parish of St. John's, our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed, for our Francisca. We offer uh, continued prayers for the Mazzarelli Hamilton family, Fred, Monica, Heidi, Amy, Sarah, Ross, Jenny, Marlene, James, and Pion. We pray for our homebound members, including Robert, Crystal, Lily, Erlene, and Eileen. We pray for the world, for peace and goodwill among nations, and for peoples and places of violence or oppression, and for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We continue to pray especially for the people of Ukraine. We pray for all suffering effects of climate change and natural disasters, that the peoples of all nations will find ways to cooperate with God's earth in mitigating the climate crisis. We pray for our enemies and for those who wish us harm and that all people come to understand that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, is to first love our neighbors as ourselves. We pray for our nation, for the healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity, for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without human error, and for all who struggle to change our world and its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, for Joseph, our president, members of Congress, especially Susan, Angus, Shelley, and Jared of Maine, for Janet, our governor, and Rick, our mayor, and for those responsible for, for administering justice in the courts of this land, that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel, especially those of this parish. We pray for Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. And we offer prayers of thanksgiving for the lives of those celebrating birthdays during this week, including <clears throat> Michael, Bill, Mark, and Anthea. Anthea. We pray for the departed, for Lucille Holroyd and Jane Harberger, for victims of the war in Ukraine, for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now turning to page 101, let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts who may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory 
throughout all ages. Amen. And now on page 102, let us say together a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our des desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. This brings us to the end of our service today. As always, we are happy and grateful that you've been able to be with us and hope you'll join us again soon. I should have said a little bit more about Augustine. He did become Bishop of uh, Hippo. He, um, he was, it was, it was under circumstances that were fairly frequent in those days when he didn't want to become um, Bishop, but he was literally dragged um, before the um, other bishops and forced uh, to become Bishop of Hippo. But he served that uh, office faithfully um, for many years. He, and, he, and by the way, he died in 430. He also was, um, in addition to his books that he had written that I mentioned earlier, that would be his confessions and the city of God. He is um, probably best known for um, his defense against certain heresies, notably the, the Donatists of the Carthage area, area. We tend to think of Hippo as being, I'm sorry, Augustine as being very extremely orthodox in his thinking and perhaps a little judgmental, more than a little judgmental. However, if you read his letters to various uh, people who were having troubles, you'll find a completely different picture of the man. He actually had a good heart. And um, well, he deserves his day. So again, thank you for being with us. May God bless us all this day. 